Yeah, I mean, it's, it's truly staggering. And honestly, uh, I, I wasn't prepared for all the sights. And I imagine that's what a lot of the relief crews are going through. Indeed, many of the international crews actually told us that, saying that they weren't expecting this. Because when you walk through the center of Derna, what, you, what strikes you is how incredible amount of water there must have been because you can tell this by how high the buildings have been destroyed, where the trees have ended up, where the vehicles have ended up. So a car being transported, you know, three or four stories high and ending up in someone's front room, that's extraordinary. You know, seeing the bottom of the valley and where the, the water started and seeing the trees up on top of a 15-story apartment block is just extraordinary. There are cars and vehicles all over the place, you know, top, upside down, up against walls, you know, piled all together, out at sea, you know, or the coastline is packed with cars in, you know, in a sort of haphazard fashion, as, a, as though some sort of giant crazy toddler has just gone whack with the middle of the, the city centre and smashed it all. And that's what's happening in the city centre. Also, the, the crews that are landing have come it's, it's been difficult. I, I think it, that seems to be the pervading problem. That it's been difficult to get in to, to this part of Libya. And they've come in small numbers and quite late. It's nearly a week on now. And so there is a limit to what they can do. And there are lots of people in utter shock. The, the whole of the centre of, of, of Turner can't quite cope with what's happened you know entire apartment blocks absolutely wiped away because can, can i show you just behind me if you bear with me the that whole of that center which is just a flat sandy bottom that used to be packed the most highly populated part of a very highly populated city and that was wall to wall like the, you can see behind it the, the buildings are all up against each other and all jostling very very close little alleyways that was what that empty patch of land was packed full of buildings apartment blocks all sorts if you look out at the sea i don't know whether you can tell that there's a color difference that's how far the the black uh, the dark colour, the darker colour, is how far all the mud and the debris has infected the normally blue aqua colour Mediterranean. You can see Italian warships just stationed off who, who have been there for the past few days. I'm not exactly sure how long they've been there, but they've been there helping in the recovery of bodies which are still being washed up at shore and, and floating about in the ocean. But there is still hope because we we responded to a call late last night when we saw all the uh, late yesterday afternoon when we saw all the relief crews running and they got a, a call that they'd heard uh, a voice of a, of a woman underneath the rubble and i must admit we stayed and watched it no one there could believe anyone had survived it because this amount of force from one body of water when whole buildings can't resist it, it's very difficult to imagine actual humans can, can resist it. Well, this morning we heard that that young woman was rescued. So there is still, like in all of these cases, there's, they throw up these miracle um, survival people who have managed to somehow, against all the odds, come through it all. Um, and we'll be hoping to bring you more of that later on. Yeah, it's good to hear those uh, tiny stories of hope, uh, Alex. Uh, and the pictures you've been showing us really are quite staggering. You talked about how difficult it is for teams to get in. What about aid? Uh, can you give us an update on that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's clearly a bit busier and it's exponentially getting a tiny bit busier with more people going in. But we're talking about what appears to me to be anyway from a, a, a non-expert point of view as far as relief aid goes it appears to be a huge scale a huge number of people who have either lost their homes and that is an estimated 300,000 or who have, who have lost relatives there are more than 10,000 people unaccounted for so we must presume that they're missing maybe under rubble or they've perished in this disaster and then the, there's the ones that have actually died on top of it. So um, there's, a, there's a huge amount of challenges facing 
this city in eastern Libya, you know, which is in a country which has enormous challenges, not least because there are two competing, opposing governments, authorities in the east and west, not least because of the history which dates back to the Arab Spring back in 2011 when a NATO-led campaign, military campaign, ousted the dictator and all that, the problems that ensued from that, not least because the country was awash with weapons since and had a civil uh, war that followed and, you know, is, is reduced to, in some areas, extreme poverty. There are lots and lots of challenges here and now they have a massive disaster which, by any means of measurement, would challenge a really rich, fully functioning country. And there are not many of those around the world, let's face it. So the challenges here are enormous. The aid is beginning to come in. We're hearing about World Health Organization supplies arriving. We're hearing more and more crews come, you know, relief crews coming. They, they to have told us that there are more of them coming, but they are small compared to the problem. Really small and sparse on the ground and it's difficult to see a lot of the locals telling us, a lot of the Libyans uh, doing it for themselves, travelling from Misrata, from Tripoli, from all parts of the country to help in what is a, a massive challenge on the ground and they feel once again that they're not really getting the sort of response that, for instance, those sufferers in the Turkey earthquake got not so long ago. We saw that and um, Sky was on the ground there in, in large numbers covering what went on there. We saw a massive international response to that. I don't feel, seriously, that has happened quite yet. Also very sad. Uh, Alex Inderna, thank you.